Where does go? Oh, fish on. Nice one. Nice one, guys. There's another one following him. Big one following him, guys. There's two in there. Big one following him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's pulling drag, guys. Look at that. There we go, folks. Nice spring large mouth, guys. Got that big two bug right up there in the roof of his mouth. Well, folks, as you can see, today we're going to be fishing for largemouth bass. Cold water, water's about 47 degrees. They've just moved up into the shallows. We're going to be going after them with bitsy bugs. You folks stay tuned. We're going to teach you a few things today. Angler's Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Oxart, your single source supplier. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Easy Loader, all boat trailers are not created equal. And Honda Marine, it's all about power. Another one. Oh, he's around the tree. One small one. Come here, buddy. You ate up that bitsy bug, partner. Man, I've been down there all winter feeding on nothing. I'll eat anything. All right, buddy. Thank you. Folks, a little trick, we just pulled up onto this dock here and we hit two fish. We got a nice fish and then we got a smaller fish. But I saw two or three other fish bolt out from underneath that dock and we hooked up with those two fish. So what we're gonna do, they're, they're spooked right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish down in about oh, an hour or so we'll come back to this dock and those fish will be settled back down. We know they're here. We fished all the way down this shoreline and had a few small strikes, but we found a school of them on this dock. Instead of sitting there and beating them to death, we're gonna leave them alone let them relax and then we'll come back and, and hit them in about an hour or so. That's just a little trick. If you get on fish like that and you hook one, you see one come bolting out, make a few casts, but don't pound it to death. Give it a little time to relax and then come back to it. And you'll, I guarantee nine times out of 10, you're gonna come back to that dock in an hour and pick up another fish. We're gonna move on down the shoreline here. Nice bitsy bug large mouth. Alright partner. There you go. Got him guys. Got him. Uh, guys I had to pull that fish off of those three logs back there. He's not a giant, but hey, we'll take him. Buddy, you were a lumber bass. Nice little bass. Had to slap him up over the logs back here. Buddy, 
There you go, partner. Go back to your logs. Those logs right back there, guys. I flipped back in behind him and he was sitting back in there. Folks, one of the things that we struggle with here in the Northwest, that last fish there we caught, I had to pull them up through the logs and whatnot. And when you watch, watch a lot of fishing shows, you know, you see guys fishing down south for the bass. And the thing that's different with us versus the southern strain of bass and the northern strain of bass, with us in the Northwest here, our water's extremely clear. And a lot of the shows that you'll watch, you'll see guys talking about 65 pound test braided lines and 30 pound test monofilament. Well, that's great if you're in muddy water. What we have to run in order to catch fish is anywhere from 12 to 15 pound test. You get any heavier than that and those bass can see it with this clear water and you're not going to get the strikes. So one of the things I can tell my, my fellow Northwest anglers that are used to fishing that clear water, get away from that old adage of, you know, I got to have the 50 pound test line on there to get it done. If you go with the small bait like we've got here with this Bitsy Bug, 12 to 15 pound test mono, when you flip into these spots, going through brush and whatnot, you're going to have to set the hook hard, but you're going to have to finesse that fish out, and sometimes you're going to have to drive in there and get them. Um, we don't have the ability to run that heavy line to pull those big fish through there, so downsize your line, run that 12 to 15 pound test, and just finesse those fish out of those spots. It can be done. Right there, guys. Oh, come here, girl. Come here. Gotcha. Look at that, guys. That right there, folks, is what Bitsy Bugging Bass in the springtime is all about. Little tiny bait right there. Big old bass. Look at that, folks. That is a dandy. Let's throw this fish on the scale, see what she weighs. I'm going to guess about five pounds. Fish right there, guys, four and a half pounds. Nice large mouth, guys. Beauty. That's a beautiful fish. Oh, gorgeous. Beautiful fish. Folks, the way we're fishing this rig here today is we're, we're looking for dock structure. Particularly the walkway portions up closest to the shore seems to be where the fish are holding that. They're up as shallow as they can get to get as much of this warmth absorbed as they can. But what we're doing, we're just simply taking this Bitsy Bug and we're flipping it right up to the back of the dock, like this weed pad right here. We're gonna flip it up towards the walkway, right there. Let it go down to the bottom. A lot of times they hit it right when it hits the water. Engage your reel real slow. We're trying to parallel cast the, the, uh, the dock here so that we're working all the structure. Put it back up in there again. Trying to keep that bait in contact with the bottom and we're just kind of dragging it back to us, just kind of shaking it. You want to do it real aggressive action this time here with the water being as cold as it is. Just try to keep it in contact with the bottom and just kind of shake it and drag it back to you. We're trying to imitate water dogs, any type of spring lizards down there moving around, maybe some small bullhead catfish. Just keep that bait down there on the bottom and work it slow.
another one. There's one right there, guys. Oh, that's a nice smallie, I think. Yeah, small mouth. Small mouth mixed in here. Right there, guys. This lake's got both species in it, and they just happen to be up together. They've, these fish have just moved out of their deep wittering water. We've literally been fishing this lake for a couple of weeks now, trying to time it right when these guys move out. And we've hit 70 degree temperatures. We've been running about 50 degrees for the last three weeks and really cold at night down in the 20s. And these fish just haven't moved up. And what we keyed off of, our temperature came up. Throw that guy back. Our temperature went from the 50s up into the 70s. And this water temperature has gone up about six degrees in about four days. We've gone from 42 to around 47, 48 degrees. These fish have moved up. They're on these docks and I'm having fun. Folks, I want to take a second here and talk to you kind of about the rig that we're using. And flipping can be kind of a, you know, a real specific type of rod and reel. And, and you know, you hear guys saying, oh, you got to use an eight, nine footer. You can use whatever you want. You can use a spinning pole. You can use a bait caster. If it's what you've got, that's what you use. You know, I grew up not having 20 poles like I've got now. I just had one spinning pole and that's what I used. But when you hear people talking about flipping rods in reels, if you're going to do it by the book, what you're looking at, this is a 7 foot 6 Fenwick HMX Heavy. I've got a Quantum PT Energy. The key to the reel, it's a bait casting reel. The key to the reel is a high gear ratio. This is a 6 2 to 1 gear ratio. In a, in a, a 5 3 to 1, it would work. But the benefit of the 6 2 to 1, you'll see when we pitch into these spots, I, I put all 300 pounds into the hook set. I'm reefing on it. And what happens a lot of times when those fish pick that bait up is they run right to you. And if you've got a slow retrieve reel, you're not going to be able to catch up to them in time. So the 6-2 to 1 helps you pick that line out of the water and set the hook. What the longer rod does is it gives you that leverage that you need. If you had something that was around 6 foot, you set the hook, you would run out of space. Because usually you'll feel the bite, you try to reel down to them, that 6-2 to one's picking the line up, and then you lean back into them, that long rod is setting the hook for you. But if you got a spin and pull and that's all you got, use it. You don't have to be gear specific. The bait that we're using, it's one of my all-time favorite spring baits, and what it is, it's a Strike King Bitsy Bug. This is a 16th ounce model. What we've got on the back of this guy right here is just a pork chunk. It's a Strike King Bow Leech, and it's a perfect coupling for that bait right there. Now, now over pork versus plastic, if you look up on the rod handle here, some of the options, this is a 16th ounce here. This is also a 16th ounce Bitsy Bug. And an option that I'll go to a little later in the spring when the fish are more aggressive, I'll flip over to this plastic. And this is just a Berkeley 3-inch Power Craw in a matching color of black and blue. And then here's a 3-inch Power Craw in a matching color of the pumpkin and orange. I'm typically a pork guy. What pork does for me is, one, it feels more real. It's more textile. When you flip the pork out and it hits, it'll undulate when it falls down. You have a lot more motion with your pork than you do with your plastic. Plastic's a little more rigid. If you're working a bait real aggressively, say from, for the water temperature that we're fishing right now is 47 to 50 degrees. We're getting to some pockets at around 51, 52 degrees. This pork is the way to go. When you start getting up into that 55 to 60 degree range when you can fish a little more aggressively, you would go with a heavier jig and you could switch over to this plastic if you wanted. But just a little change up, you know, if everybody's out there in a the lake and they're flipping pork, you can switch over and put that plastic craw on there. Fish on, guys. Big one. Oh man, he's got me around that tree. Oh no. Oh, he's got me around a tree. Mm. Big one, guys. It's a big one. He got me around a tree here. See if we can get him for you. Oh, I got him off the tree. There he comes, guys. Well, folks, remember when I talked to you about coming back about an hour later? Guess what? It's almost an hour later to the spot. Look at that. Another nice fish off of there on that Bitsy Bug right there, guys. Just got to be patient and come back to those spots. They will produce again. Nice chunky fish, probably about three pounds. Let's throw him on the boga grip here just to get an idea how much he weighs for you guys at home. Bass can be hard to guess sometimes. Let's see what he goes here on the old boga grip. I'm guessing about three pounds. Three and a half pounds, guys. 
just like that. Patience pays off. Come back to those spots where you found them before and you'll pick them up. Just gotta let them settle down. We could probably come back here an hour later and get another one. Get this guy back in the water. Okay, folks, I just parallel casted the dock this direction. Now what I'm gonna do, I always start out with the face first. Now what I'll do, I'm gonna swing the boat out, try to move around quiet. I'm gonna pull way out and I'm gonna come in and position myself for this direction here. Now I've covered both of those parallels. Let me swing the boat around here, bring it out and line it right up and get it in, in line with my target, which is the dock here. Folks, okay, I'm lined up with the dock this direction now. Now what I'm gonna do, just pitch it up in there. Then I can fish all the way down the dock this direction, right here. Always make sure, fish it thoroughly. I'll flip in there four, five, six times. If I really believe there's a fish in there, sometimes I'll flip in there 10 times because on the ninth time, you might've gotten mad and the 10th time he's gonna eat it. You never know, so be patient, especially when the water's cold like this. You wanna fish real slow, you wanna line up on your objects. Just be real methodical about your presentation. You'll catch more fish that way. Okay, guys. Oh, keep your head down, buddy. Oh, he's taking me back under the dock. Oh, guys, this is a big spring bass right here, folks. That is a bitsy bug in largemouth, folks. Look at that. Ah. Holy heavens, folks. Look at that. Look at that fish. Oh, come here, you big girl. Get on my finger. Get on my finger. Come on. There you go, guys. <laughs> look at that bitsy bug right down there in the roof of that fish's mouth. Look at that. I got pretty big mitts, and I can almost get that in there like them southern guys do for them southern bass. Folks, that is a big northern strain largemouth, guys. I'm telling you what, bitsy bugging. If you don't believe in bitsy bugs, hopefully after this show you're gonna believe in them. Look at that little lure right there. That bass, I'm gonna guess, guys, is five pounds plus. Let's throw him on the boga grip here. Let's see what we've got. Folks, that is a little over five pounds. That gets this boy from the Pacific Northwest excited on a bass like that. That's a big one for us up here. Look at the belly on that, getting ready to spawn. Take good care of this fish, we're gonna put her back in the water. Cast up into this point, this rocky point right here and see if we can get something. spring largemouth for you right off that rock point there oh, yeah. come here buddy uh. come here buddy uh. got him there we go folks on that bitsy bug pork on the back nice thick fish look at the belly on that one guys that's what flipping is all about right there. Beautiful fish. Beautiful spring largemouth. 
All right, partner, let's get you back in there. Uh. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish, guys. Keep the boat off this brush pile here. Let's see. Oh, it's a nice smallie, guys. Nice chunky smallie. Come here, buddy. Yeah, you hit that bitsy bug, didn't you, partner? Come here, bud. Nice chunky smallie. Hit that bitsy bug. All right, there. Water's about 45 degrees, guys. There ain't a lot moving, so we're grateful with anything we hooked on a day like today. Boat control's been about near impossible. We've had gusts probably up to 30 miles an hour. Trying to stay on top of these guys in this brush has been a pain, but it's all worth it. He ain't a giant, but I'm happy. Well, folks, he's not the biggest fish of the day today, but I tell you what, I'll take him. We've had a great day on the water flipping that bitsy bug. We've got some weather moving in, so I think we're going to call this our last fish and head back for the barn. I hope you've enjoyed the show today on flipping bitsy bugs. I know I enjoyed making it for you. I always like getting out here in the early spring and catching some big spring bass. As always, I want to thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you next week.